Good morning, folks. It seems a long time since I've seen you. It is a long time since I've seen you. It's well over a month. Uh, but it's really nice to be back with you again. As you know, I've been to Australia. I'll be talking a little bit about that in a minute. But a warm welcome to you all, and there is tea and coffee after the service. So please feel free, and if you're visiting, a warm welcome to you. Um, we have a Kirk session on the 8th of May here in the Don Suite, 7.30, this Wednesday then, the 8th of May. A big thank you to Maggie for standing in for me for all those weeks. I hope they were kind to you. They were. Yeah. No, I won't go into that, no, no. So you didn't get any letters then? No, that's good then. Right, no, they're not, they're not, they're not so bad, are they? They're not so bad. Right, we have Helen with us on the organ, and uh, both hands are working, aren't they? That's good. <laughs> right, let's worship God then with our first hymn, O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder.
We do have an intimation here. Octalas School Parent Council invite you to a family Cayley dance, Saturday the 11th of May at 5 e Legion. The doors open at 7 p.m. for 7.30. Uh, start tickets, adults six pound, children three pound. For tickets, please contact this number here and uh, we can put it in the down suite after. So that's the 11th of May at 5 e Legion. Now then. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, most gracious, most loving, in you we live and move and have our being. And so with the psalmist we pray, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely darkness will hide me, and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light to you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ask that you would touch each and every heart here as we worship you this day. Loving Father, we thank you again this day for Jesus, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Lord Jesus, you are our rock, our fortress. You are our Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah, that nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. And as we worship you this day, may our thoughts be of you, your life, death, and resurrection. May the stories from your life fill us with the love you show to the people you met. May we remember you this day as we take communion. May we be truly in communion with you. These things we pray in your precious name. Amen. Now then, oh, here we go. It's my little mate there. <laughs> How are you diddling? Good. Good. I haven't seen you for ages. Are you all right? Yeah. Are you, are you looking after your dad? Yeah. He's uh, been a bit naughty, but it's Has so he? Fine. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, he's been a bit naughty, but he's still fine. Yeah. This is how it goes with parents. You know, you yeah. have to take the rough with the smooth, don't you? Yeah. Now then, guess where I've been? America. No, no not quite. Australia. Australia, yeah. Now, as you know, in Australia, everything is upside down and back to front. And that makes reading really difficult, but I did manage it. I'm only kidding, but some things do look upside down and back to front. The moon looks upside down. Mm -hmm. if, you look at, if, you, if you look at the moon from Perth in Scotland, it looks one way up. If you look from Perth in Australia, it looks the other way up. And from Perth in Scotland, do you know what a new moon is? Mm, yeah. You do. You know when you see like a little slim th a crescent moon? Yeah. Looks like a, a banana. Yeah. Yeah. And then the moon gets bigger as you go through the month. Yeah. It goes from right to left. But in Australia, the new moon is on the left and it goes from left to right. It's the opposite way, isn't it? Upside yep. down. And the sun here, in Perth, Australia, eh, Scotland, the sun is at its highest in the south, when you look south. But in Perth, Australia, the sun is at the highest when you look north. Hmm. It's very confusing, I can tell you. And um, what I was going to say, 
Uh, so I had a brilliant time because my brother lives on this. He's got so many, he's got 140 acres of woodland. And I love walking in the woods. So, and he got a dog, which is one of these hard dogs. You know, they look hard. You know what I mean? And uh, so I was a bit like that, but it's a fantastic dog. So I took him out twice a day, uh, her, I mean, in the morning before the sun came up and, uh, and then in the, in the evening before it went dark. So that was brilliant. And then in the afternoon I got to swim in the swimming pool because it was 33 degrees. Yeah, I mean, that's a heat wave here, isn't it? We'd ne we wouldn't survive, would we? But it hadn't rained for a long, long time. He got these big dams there for the water, but there's nothing in them. But guess what? I saw lots of kangaroos. And I almost didn't come home because a kangaroo almost jumped on top of me. And that, I'm not kidding, that's true. It didn't see me, and I didn't see it, and it came running away from the dog and almost jumped on me, just about turned away and bounced off into the forest. So I saw lots of kangaroos, but I didn't see one spider. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I know. So, um, people tell you be, be afraid of spiders, but they didn't tell me to be afraid of kangaroos. It was the kangaroo which nearly killed me. Anyway, so, when I was telling you about the moon, if you, if you look at the moon in Perth, Scotland, and if you look at the moon from the Perth in Australia, it looks the opposite way around. So if those two people didn't know that, they'd have a big argument, wouldn't they, about who's right? Which shows sometimes we need all the information, don't we? Yeah. If we start to have, a, have an argument. So, anyway, I've got some up for you. Thank you. What's on there? Kangaroos. Yeah, what is it? It's a one dollar. It's a one dollar, yeah. So if you ever get to Australia, you can spend that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Now then, before you go, will you light our candle for us? Uh, because we need Jesus as the light of the world, don't we? Yeah, yeah thank you. Well, thank you then, Verity, and uh, <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. And don't worry, your dad will start behaving himself as he gets older. Our next hymn then is... Uh, Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. That's number 644.
Now, because you've had Maggie with you for so long, I thought we'd wean you off her slowly. So Maggie's going to come and bring us the reading for today. He's a right slave driver, isn't he? <laughs> Our first reading today is from the book of Acts, reading from chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. Let us hear the word of God. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening to his message. The Jewish believers who had come from Joppa with Peter were amazed that God had poured out his gift of the Holy Spirit on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speaking in strange tongues and praising God's greatness. Peter spoke up. These people have received the Holy Spirit just as we also did. Can anyone then stop them from being baptized with water. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay with them for a few days. And our second reading is from Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, reading 33 to 41. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him and said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran up with a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, and put it on the end of a stick. Then he held it up to Jesus' lips and said, Wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to bring him down from the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus died. The curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus had died. This man was really the son of God, he said. Some women were there looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. They had followed Jesus while he was in Galilee and had helped him. Many other women who had come to Jeru Jerusalem with him were there also. Amen and thanks be to God for the reading of his holy day and all power and glory to him this day and forevermore. And our next hymn is The Old Rugged Cross.
Uh, by the way, I hope you got when I was chatting to Verity that I had a fantastic time in Australia with my brother and his family and then all these walking and swimming and looking at the stars. They got a telescope and uh, I had a brilliant time. Seeing all these stars I'd never seen before and some of them were upside down as well. The ones that I can see from here are upside down there. But anyway, I had a brilliant time. Right. From the Gospel reading. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There, or do you want to sit down? No, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Eh? Are you sure no. no, no, see you In case you wanted a backrest, obviously. Right then. <laughs> now, I don't know if you remember, uh, but not too long ago, I was talking about icons. Icons are religious works of art. You'll often see them in the Orthodox Church. Uh, they'll carry a uh, a picture of Jesus or Mary or whatever. And uh, they, they're designed to inspire devotion, to give that sense of the sacred and the divine life of our faith. And um, in our denomination, we don't use icons, but we do have things like stained glass windows, which are essentially just large icons. Uh, but the word icon means image. And in the letter to the Colossians, Jesus is referred to as the image of the invisible God. And the image, uh, the word image is a translation of the Greek word icon. So it says Jesus is the icon of the invisible God. To look at Jesus is to see the image of the invisible God. But one of the things I like to do is to see icons, icons, not just in works of art, but in everyday life as we go about our lives, in everyday situations. Uh, uh, these situations, they speak to me of Jesus and the gospel. And one of those icon moments happened uh, as I traveled back from Perth to Doha in Qatar. This plane is enormous, it's enormous, absolutely enormous, with four gigantic engines on this plane, and it's got two decks. And uh, going there, th this guy told me that his wife had got him a ticket on the upper deck, a special ticket for him. Now, coming back from P Perth to Doha, I was assigned a seat on the upper deck, so I thought, oh, have I been upgraded to business class or first class? But alas, no. Uh, I was one of the few people of the economy class at the back of the upper deck. Oh, by the way, I was really grateful for something as I traveled in economy class. I was really grateful for my wee little leggies. There are advantages to having wee little leggies at times. Anyway, um, and then from Doha to Edinburgh, the plane was smaller, still large, uh, but just the one deck. And I had to walk through business class to get to economy class. And my seat was just a couple of rows uh, beyond the business class. And then when everyone is seated, a curtain comes across and that separates the business seats from the economy seats. And standing at this curtain just a few feet away, it became one of those icon moments, a glimpse into Jesus and the gospel. Jesus was nailed to the cross at nine in the morning, six hours later, he died, and Mark's gospel says, 
With a loud cry, Jesus breathed His last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And this curtain in the temple separated what they call the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple, which was also divided into the inner court and the outer court. And within that sections where Gentiles were not allowed to go any further or women were not allowed to go any further. But this curtain was about 60 feet high and 30 feet wide. It was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, the, whole of, the Holy of Holies was reserved for the high priest who could only enter one day a year, the Day of Atonement. Before entering the Holy of Holies, he had to purify himself, ritually purify himself, and then he would enter through the curtain into the Holy of Holies. And, uh, and there he would make a sacrifice of a goat for the sins of all the people. And another goat was then released into the wilderness to carry away the sins of Israel. When Mark says that the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, it's not clear whether he meant this literally or figuratively. But what is clear is the theological meaning. The curtain is torn in two from top to bottom. This was a divine action. Christ himself becomes our eternal high priest, whom offers the once and for all sacrifice of himself, and he becomes the scapegoat who bears away the sins of the people. And in the story of Jesus, in the stories in the Gospels, uh, we get a preview of this as Jesus eats with sinners and outcasts, those deemed unworthy even to enter the economy class uh, of the great temple. The tearing in two of the curtain uh, can be seen as a tearing down of the sacrificial and religious hierarchy of the temple system. As Jesus is criticized for associating with undesirables, he reminds the religious leaders who think they have a first-class ticket into the kingdom of God that they need to think again. In Australia, I had the opportunity to go to church on two Sundays. I was a bit hesitant about going because I didn't want it to spark my mind as a minister and for me to sit there and sort of analyze the service, if you like. I just wanted to go as a believer in Jesus. But I needn't have worried uh, because as soon as I walked in, I felt extremely emotional as I felt the soothing presence of the Spirit of the Lord. And I can tell you that ministers, priests, bishops, whatever, we don't have first-class tickets of faith. We are not behind a curtain of special faith while our congregation are in the economy seats of faith. We struggle with life like everyone else. We wrestle with the same things we wrestle with the same fears. We wrestle with the same doubts. We ask the same questions as everyone else. And we wrestle with sin like everyone else. Our need for God is always there, and thankfully that need does not diminish even when you've been a minister or a Christian for a long time. It doesn't diminish because it's that need that cuts through our fears, our doubts, our questions, and drives us to seek our Lord. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for the living God. The curtain has been torn in two. There is no separation. There is no first class or economy seats. 
Every seat on this flight to the kingdom of God is a seat beside our Lord, and that is the best place to sit. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Mark makes no further comment on this. However, the sentence itself is comment enough. Jesus died, and the curtain in the Holy of Holies was torn in two. At that moment of Jesus' death, access into the Holy of Holies, meaning the very presence of God, was opened up for all Israel. And the reading from Acts shows the Holy of Holies was opened up to the Gentiles too. In other words, to us all. Because we read, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all who heard the message. The Jewish believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles because they heard him speaking in other languages and praising God. And Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So we ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days, and he did. So first the Samaritans and then the Gentiles, they were upgraded from an economy class or even below economy class uh, where there is no sep to a new class, where there's no separation between Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, women and men, slave and free. Because the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. That little sentence says so much because it comes immediately after Jesus breathing his last. The death of Christ tore apart the curtain into the Holy of Holies. And through the resurrection, we are upgraded into a new way of being. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles who were considered unclean. Can you imagine those in the first class seat of my flight finding out that those in the, in the economy seats had exactly the same privileges as themselves? I think they too would be astonished. Probably other things as well, but they would certainly be astonished. When I went to that church in Australia, I didn't want to be there as a minister, as though I had a first-class ticket of faith, because I don't. I went there just hoping to sit in the presence of the Lord, because that is the best seat to be in, wherever it may be. And I wasn't disappointed. As the hymn says, all the way my Savior leads me, Oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit, clothed immortal, wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. The curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. That is a most wonderful and most beautiful sentence. It's an icon. It gives us a vivid picture of what Jesus did for us through his life, his death, and his resurrection. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As the body of Jesus lay broken on the cross and he breathed his last, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The way is open. You are invited to take a seat beside our Lord at his table. Let's sing, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. As the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed them, let us draw near to God and offer him our prayers and thanksgiving. Let's pray. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, for the majesty of your glory, the wonder of your works, and the riches of your grace. Therefore, with your people of all places and times, and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your greatness and sing your praises in the angel's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Now we celebrate the feast of our redemption and proclaim the death of Jesus and announce his resurrection and ascension until he comes again in glory. Most gracious God, accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
and receive the offering of ourselves which we now make, our thoughts and words and desires and deeds. Now, in, in the words that Jesus taught, we further pray together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We do this then in obedience to Christ's example and appointment on the night of his betrayal. He took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, he tore it in two, and said, This is my body, broken for you, do this in memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in memory of me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Take, eat, this is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this in memory of him. This is the cup of the new covenant sealed by Christ's blood, which was shed, that the sins of many would be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you. After Jesus had risen from the dead, he appeared to the disciples and said, Peace be with you, so in the joyful presence of our Lord, let's turn to one another and offer the sign of peace. Peace be with you. 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 Let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you glory, thanks, and praise for the dying and undying love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In your great goodness, you have brought us into communion with him and with all who love him and made us heirs of his everlasting kingdom. By your grace, may we continue in this holy fellowship and live to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn has one of the most sublime verses 
in the whole hymn book. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? When I survey the wondrous cross. <laughs> The curtain in the temple has been torn in two. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill you all with His love, with His joy, and with His peace this day and forevermore. Thank you for joining with us in the church and at home online. I hope you all have a blessed week. <laughs>